All right, James Sykes, CEO of Baseload Energy, here with Cameron McKay. We're going to share some details about you know, near misses in the Athabasca Basin and talking about some of the results that we've seen at Accio to date and how they're pretty compelling. Cam, how are you doing? Doing pretty good. Yeah, getting ready to go back into the field on Friday. Looking forward to seeing everybody and seeing some rocks, but yeah, doing good. Hey, you've been up in the field quite a bit this year. How are things going up there? Good. Yeah, team's tight. Um, you know, seeing lots of interesting things and intersecting some mineralization and hoping to find more. We have been intersecting mineralization. So let's talk about that a little bit and we'll, we'll just quickly jump into the drill program results that we've seen. Then we'll focus on hole 95 and we'll look at some near misses and how fun those things are. So looking at the drill program to date, we've done 15 drill holes. The vast majority were in the red circle and hole 95 was in the white circle. So what, what can you tell us about the red circle drilling and the white circle drilling? So the red circle drilling is where we started off. It's primarily targeting pod four, which is kind of the mustardy, yellowy brown one. Um, and it, like, for good reason, it does have quite a bit of our mineralization. And then the drill holes were planned where possible to intersect multiple lenses to save on meterage. Um, but the best grades that we've seen to date are in pods one and two, which is sort of the pinky fuchsia one and the blue one to its right. There are obviously, you know, really nice high grade intercepts in, in some of the other ones, but the, where we've got the most consistent results are in, in pods one and two. So that's sort of the next phase that we're moving on to um, is understanding those ones, uh, drilling them off um, for resource estimation purposes and also for expansion as well. There's some areas where they, they might be closed off, but like uh, I'm not totally sold on that. And as we've seen from drilling pod seven, that one definitely is not closed off. So uh, I think we'll get into that in a minute. Yeah, so we're talking hold 95 here into pods one and seven, correct? Yeah. Yeah, so it, the radioactivity results look great based on the CPS. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that one, I can't remember. That one where pod seven was known to exist there, but it's definitely a lot wider than what we previously encountered and modeled up to this point. So we'll have to wait and see what the chemistry comes back with, with grades, but obviously we're happy about any additional width means additional pounds in the ground. So we're happy about that. So yeah, like these, these three pods, or sorry, pod one and two, you can see there on your screen though. Those, those are the, the ones that we'll be targeting the most uh, with the next phase of drilling, but also now uh, pod seven as well. So all of, all of our uh, holes that were designed to hit pod one, some of them uh, initially stopped because we thought pod seven pinched, but now we're obviously gonna extend them and keep drilling off to the North and hopefully have pod seven grow. And hold 95 has also seen the highest radioactivity results out of pod seven, correct? Yes. Yeah. No, it, it looks like it's getting better uh, than what it previously looked like last year. It's a little bit of a weird one. Um, geologically, it's found mostly hosted within what I'm interpreting as a, a mafic intrusive rock. And it it's extraordinarily competent basement rock. And the the grade that grades that you see are basically a function of like how dense there is these like hairline fracture networks that blow out often but mostly it's just like these like like densely packed networks of hairline fractures that are carrying the uranium bearing fluids and there's very little in the way of alteration and it seems like the uh frequency and intensity of the, that fracturing and mineralization uh, is occurring at least in 95 so we're hopeful that that uh, trend continues as we move north yeah i don't see why it wouldn't this structural system is very complex and very large though so Hopefully that it goes. Okay, as we're looking at hole 95, we've got four other drill holes on there, and they all date back to 2021, which was the discovery year. So what can I, what can you share with us? Like 90 drill holes later, the story kind of changes, doesn't it? Yeah, it's funny that we're like we're returning to the original sec like discovery section, and you can see how incredibly close, like you know, our best pod and what's turning out to be a very exciting pod were to that initial drilling um you know mere meters away and we you know like there were there's a whole other part of the system that was completely unknown obviously that was early days that was only four holes but yeah it's just it, it goes to show you how close you can be to these things sometimes and it looks like you've drilled everywhere but you really I mean there's lots of open spaces even in places that look like densely drilled so you gotta test everything yeah absolutely because hole four even between overburden and mineralization the upper half of that was what I would consider to be, uh, well, no, no uranium in it. And then the lower half of that had uranium, but there's no way to tell if that's coming from pod one or pod two. No, and we would have written it off as just being part of pod two. I mean, back yeah. then that was the only pod we knew about, but 
we certainly would have attributed it to the the mineralization that we knew and not and not well, I mean we didn't think that there was another one there at the time but well here we are and I'm glad that there is absolutely like imagine imagine the, the story <laughs> the difference of the story if we would have just yeah. drilled one more hole from that same pad as pad yeah. four and we would have hit those drill holes but there was yeah. there was no indication to do that no I mean no I yes no it, it's the yeah, hindsight's 2020 <laughs> yeah it seems obvious now but it wasn't at the time let's talk about another near miss hole 28 probably never gets talked about externally we talk about it quite a bit within the office mm -hmm. hole 28 is awesome I love hole 28 when I saw that alteration I was blown away by it and surprised that nothing really came back <laughs> Yeah, we've had it flagged for a long time about like it's it's some it seems like something special like in terms of its alteration and uh like uh, as a vector like if you if we just had hole 28 like if that was like the first hole of like a program somewhere we would be psyched um yeah and so it, it we think it's pointing to, to some stuff that might be uh interesting further to the east so i guess we can get into that yeah and hole 28 was the it's the, our only drill hole that is drilled east of the sandstone correct that's right. It's the only one that is collared completely east of the sandstone. Yeah, so complete basement rocks. And then that red ellipse shows the alteration, the thickness of the alteration that will show very quickly. And this is where it's located within the whole Accio footprint. And looking at the alteration, as Cam mentioned, if we saw this in drill core, I, I'd be stoked. I would be jumping up and down for joy. that You've got weak alteration in, in the light blue. And you've got some much stronger alteration in dark blue and you've got your hematite overprinting everything so there's your redox front and lo and behold you've got over 10 ppm uranium in one of our samples so it, just based on that alone i think that looks incredible yeah in terms of the clay alteration this might it's it it it'd certainly be in you know the top five of, of clay alteration uh that we've seen in the whole system and it's nowhere near any known known mineralization so yeah and there it is. Like it just, it just keeps going. It's, it's completely altered, all strongly altered. You get hematite throughout. When I look at that hematite, I see modeled hematite. And to me, like, from work that I've done on Rough Rider, looking at these type of systems, that's been mobilized. Mm -hmm. No, so sure. I, yeah, I, I don't think. I think this is just a remnant of something that has passed through here. Mm -hmm. And again, we're we're still seeing over 10 ppm uranium. Which, which we consider to be a pathfinder in non-mineralized rock. Anything over 10 ppm uranium is considered to be anomalous, and you're still seeing it in the alteration system. Alteration system continues, really strong alteration. Then you get into weak alteration, dead rock. No hematite in this one, but you're still seeing elevated uranium within the rocks. So yeah, there's... no, I mean, it's it's definitely a strong indicator that we're we're near something. And it's, it's also, it it's... It, it seems to be like, like it's kind of like capped to the east, like, like, like it kind of goes dead a little bit and then you get into sort of the known Accio system, but this is the only, or sorry, to the west, um, as you move into the, the known Accio system, it, there's kind of like a, like a dead rock cap in between this hole and sort of the known Accio system. So I think it's like strongly suggesting that it, there is something, you know, near this hole or to the east. Yeah, for sure. And that's, you get modeled things, you get elevated uranium, same thing. It's a huge system. It's a yeah. lot of alteration. It's a lot of hematite. It's a lot of fluid moving through. That's We've got uranium in there. There's a lot going on in there. So that's it. Are we seeing, are we, are we just right beside a structural system with mineralization that is going up on the unconformity in an area that we've never drilled, looking for that structurally controlled uranium mineralization? Or are we looking for a complete mirror as... A complete mirror to the to the eastern side of the sandstone there's so many potential for this so much potential for this but every indication is that fluids are moving through that area so when we drill our mirror target we should be intersecting uh, we should be seeing what is the mirror potential for controlling the the alteration see if it's pointing that way or when we drill through the unconformity targets, we've got the potential to see what's controlling that that alteration as well. Yeah, and those both those targets are ready to go as soon as we get there. And yeah, we're excited to see those results. I'm super excited. I can't sleep anymore. Yeah. Uh, it's it's going to be fun. So after we're done, done drilling pods one, two, and seven, this is the target that we're going to be going after. Near misses. Hopefully hole 28 is a near miss because... 
personal <laughs> personal examples arrow uh, there's the news release back from 2014 0707 whole 10 so it was originally called arc 1432 it got renamed ar 10 and there it is and with the red arrow point it's drilling down to the southeast ar 15 which is 25 meters away from it is the blue arrow drilling to the northwest when you look at the the radioactivity same way we do our our radioactivity at at accio they had 2.6 meters of top radioactivity 4500 cps maximum when you compare the two so ar10 is the one on top ar15 is the one on the bottom you've got 3.8 meters versus 78 meters of cumulative radioactivity it's a big difference being 25 meters away you've got no off-scale radioactivity in hole 10 and 8.1 meters of it in hole 15 and you can you can see why you can totally get the idea why this is looking at ar15 uh, AR mineralization shown in red and then blue is completely dead rock there's nothing in it yeah it's crazy how close you can be to these things sometimes and yeah not know. that's that's 1.5 meters away and the system is just you if all you hit was the material in that blue rock you would never know that you're a meter away from high grade mineralization it is just that crazy so when, when we eventually modeled up arrow ar10 splits high grade by 10 meters it's it's crazy could have been another big another big change right there rough rider Rough Rider is another classic example. This is taken from the government website, the, the GeoAtlas. The uh, J-Zone Rough Rider mineralization is shown there as the pink outline. Historic drill holes are shown as the black dots. And there's one that's circled in blue. The stats are on the left-hand side. That is a drill hole from 1981 drilled by SMDC, the company prior to Cameco. You can see how close they were to mineralization. They were right there they were within 20 meters within 25 meters of mineralization and if i'm not mistaken they actually drilled over top of of rough rider and the model at the time was to drill for the unconformity you drill 10 meters beneath that if you don't hit mineralization you walk away and so that was the exploration model and they did that uh the guys behind hathor behind rough rider when they they re-logged some of that core and took samples and the geochem lit up it was it was phenomenal just screaming for people to go explore that area again and that was really the whole rough rider story but you can be 10 meters away from high grade and walk away from it too yeah, scary of a situation there's, i'm sure there's more of those out there too yeah no kidding no kidding well Akio was not one of those we are going to test some of these targets that we think are absolutely phenomenal and we're hoping that they're going to give us fruit because the sandstone target looks great the mirror target looks great everything around hole 28 looks absolutely fantastic so a big question then is yes is hole 28 a vector to new mineralization i hope so i hope so too yeah so we're we do what we do we are i think we're a pretty solid group of geologists who understand the chemistry and understand what we're looking at and we've got great targets and we've Got the meterage to do so. The drills are up there right now. They're spinning away. As Cam, you mentioned, those those targets are ready to go. The pads are built. We can put a drill on there and check what's under the ground. Yeah, can't wait to do it. All right. Thanks very much, Cam, for taking the time out of your day and joining me on this. Or group, again, people can check out our YouTube channel. If you're watching this, you're probably already on it. Contact us, infobaseload.com jsykesorgroup.ca and please follow us on twitter and linkedin thank you very much for watching and stay attention to our news